Okay, good morning everyone. So in the last classes, we discussed about hand layer process and spray layer process. Today, we are going to discuss about vacuum bagging. So in wet layer process, so all the process, so depends upon the thickness of the component, we are adding n number of layers by means of hand. So after prior, after a single layer, we are wetting the component, it means wetting the fibers with a resin matrix, with a matrix resin. So due to that, the process is called wet layer process and the whole process is continuing by means of hands. So that is also called as hand layer process. The main advantage of this process is, it's the cost of the tooling is very less. So here we are going for only open pore process. It means only one surface is having good finish. So and so that the tooling cost is very less and the equipment required for this, for this process is also very less. But the main disadvantage is its labor intense too and the complete the component properties mainly depends upon the skill of the lab. And then the, it is very slow process. So due to having the manual interruption, the process is very low. So secondary, spray layer process. Compared to hand layer process, spray layer process are having some more faster than hand layer process. But the, here also the tooling cost is very less but the only advantage is instead of a manual layer those all are spray laid and the, here we are using a discontinuous fibers whereas in hand layer process that is continuous fibers in spray layer that is discontinuous fibers fibers are chopped by means of chopper in our gun so and so the main advantage over hand layer process is its time consuming so compared to hand layer process spray layer spray layer takes less time but the properties will be less compared to hand layer process. Why? Because in the hand layer process, the fibers are continuous fibers as well as fabric. Whereas in spray layer process, that is discontinuous fibers. It means chopper fibers. So today we will discuss about vacuum bagging process. So this is more advanced than hand layer and spray layer process. It's a combination of hand layer process and with respect to pressure and heat. So with respect to pressure. So, this is a vacuum bagging process. So, here in vacuum bagging process, we are keeping, we are creating a pressure so that say up to one atmospheric pressure. So, up to one atmospheric pressure, we are creating a pressure on the component so that the consolidation will be high compared to hand layer process. So, vacuum bagging process, basically it's an extension of, so it's an extension of wet layer process. So in wet layer process, we have taken a fabric and wetted after that on the top of that one more fabric and that is also wetted and similarly we are repeating the process till we achieve the desired thickness. So here the, this is the extension of vacuum process. Sorry, this is the extension of wet layer process. So wet layer process here, pressure is applied. So additionally we have pressure is applying. Pressure is applied to the laminate one. So laminated one this is the final component, what we prepared, laid in order to improve its consolidation, to improve its consolidation, it means to avoid, by means of this vacuum we are avoiding the air gaps or voids, so that the consolidation means the hardening or polymerization will be high, so polymerization, polymerization will be good compared to wet layer process. Next, this is achieved by the pressure. So here we are applying a pressure. The pressure is achieved by sealing a plastic film. By sealing a plastic film. So we are keeping this entire laminate into a plastic bag. That is always the plastic film. So over the wet layer. Over the wet layer for laminate and onto the tool. So this is the schematic of our vacuum process. So here this yellow color is one is the tool. Uh, to the table. So on the top of it, so a green color one is visible to you. That is our laminate, which consists of matrix and reinforcements. So this green color and blue color, this is our laminate one. So on the top of the tool, we place the laminate. On the top of that, we used number of place. So that is peel, ply, breather. So one more vacuum bag. Sorry. So. Here is indicated only two, that is breather and peel by. On the top of that, we use a vacuum bagging. So it means the entire tool and laminate is 
plates inside a bag or it is sticked by means of a sealant. So, we will see the video. So, next, air pressure. Air under the bag is extracted. So, here we need to create a pressure. So, inside the, we are extracting the air by means of vacuum pump. We are extracting the air so that the pressure is created inside the bag. So, the pressure is up to so up to one atmospheric pressure, up to one atmospheric pressure is applied to the laminate to consolidate it. To laminate it, here we are placing one. So sorry, we are, here we are keeping one atmospheric pressure. So this is the schematic of our complete vacuum bagging process. So here the black color is that tool are considered as a table. So we need the profile. See, it means a flat profile. So this is our composite laminate. So here white and black are alternates. That is number of layers mixed with matrix and resin. So this is our component. That is composite material. So the composite material is surrounded by an yellow color material. That is a release film. Release coat or release film. That is to easily peel off the component from the mold. It means in order to avoid the sticky nature between the tool and our component. So that we are using a pill ply. Sorry, we are using a release coat. So for easily releasing the component from the tool, it means in order to avoid those, in order to avoid the addition between the two materials. So on the top of that, there is this. So on top of that, on the top of that, it is having a pill ply and number of player plies. So individual uh, every film is having its own purpose. We will discuss that in the earlier classes. So and it is surrounded with a plastic bag. So vacuum bag film is none of them, a plastic film. So complete setup, the composite after that breather, blender and peel play, this all are together, keeping in or keeping under a plastic bag. So here we need to extract the air from the bag itself. So for that purpose, here we are giving a vacuum valve. So that vacuum pipe is connected to this valve so that it is extracting. Like air can be extracted by means of this valve. So and this bag is connected to the tool by means of a sealant tape. This is two-sided or it is a double-sided tape. By means of this sealant, we are attaching the component, the equipment's tool to the film so that no air will be passed in and out of this component apart from this vacuum valve. Welcome to the James Sound Distributors Workshop. In this project, Mike was creating a gutter for a hatch using the vacuum bagging technique. This method can be useful in many different applications, so take a look at this instructional video for some helpful tips. First, Mike covered the entire mold with tape. Then he applied wax with a rag. To create the bag, Mike used one sheet of vacuum bag film and use double-sided tape to close the sides. Then he mixed the moss epoxy with a ratio of 2 to 1. Here's a JD workshop tip for you. Place an ice pack in a second tray under the resin to keep it from kicking. Mike then applied the resin sparingly with a plastic spreader to the fiberglass cloth. The strips were then laid down over the edges of the mold, making sure the corners were not bunched up. Slits were cut in the cloth around the corners to help them lay flat to the mold. Here's another JD workshop tip for you. When working with resin or any other hazardous material, wear at least two pairs of gloves so you can remove the top pair and still work with the reserves. 
Next, Mike laid down strips of release fabric over the cloth. He used a paintbrush to ensure it sticks to the resin. Again, slits were cut in the corners to allow them to lay flat. Then strips of bleeder film were laid down over the release fabric. Mike used a spray glue and laid down the breather. The finished mold was then placed inside of the bag. The breather was then taped around the end of the vacuum tube to ensure an even airflow. The tube was then placed in the bag and taped shut. Then the vacuum was turned on and Mike and TJ made sure that there was enough of the bag to cover the corners before all of the air was removed. The vacuum was left on overnight to allow the resin to harden. The mold was then removed from the bag and all of the strips of material were taken off. The gutter was then pried off of the mold using plastic spreaders and it was ready to go. Now that you've seen Mike create a gutter using the vacuum bagging technique, hopefully you have a better understanding of this procedure. To see more how-to videos, visit us on the web at jamesondistributors.com. So that is the working of our vacuum bagging process. So in detail we will say about the various layers. So here as you see that our composite is surrounded with number of layers. So in detail we will discuss about this layers. So the first one is pill prime. This is the pill prime. So that is surrounded by the component with an allogal. So that is a primary texture of the component. So that depends. So the size, the structure or the profile is dependent upon this peel plate. So if our peel plate is very smooth, then the component is also very smooth. If the peel plate is having some structures, like some irregular patterns, so if we want the pattern, similar pattern on our component, then we will take the peel plate similar to the process. So our peel plate decides the surface texture of our component. So peel plate, so it's a sacrificial open wave fiber glass or perforated heat set nylon ply. Generally we are using a nylon ply to provide the textured to provide the textured. So in a, apart from the regular surface, flat surface, if we want any texture, means any design on the surface that is obtained by means of this peel ply. So peel ply to provide the textured or clean surface necessary for further lamination or secondary bonding. So if the two surfaces, in some cases if we want to join two surfaces, so if both the surfaces are flat, then the adhesive nature between the two components will be less. So to achieve a good bonding between the two, we are using some amount of textures, so some designs, so that the surface will be irregular and so that the two components will be interlocked along with our bonding material. So to create a bonding between that, then at that conditions, we will go for texture. Apart from that, if it is a regular structure, then we will go for a clean or plain surface. So next one is release film. So it's a release film. So that it might be a sheet or a gel. So it's a sheet to prevent adhesion. It means, so here this is the tool and this is the laminate. In between these two, the blue color is our release coat. So you have already seen that in the video, he applied a gel coat. So by means of a cloth, he applied a wax onto the tool. So that the adhesive nature between the tool and the component will be less. So it means in order to avoid the sticky nature between those two, here we are using a release coat. It might be a coat or a film. So a thin film, a sheet can be used to prevent adhesion. That is our release film. The next one is blader cloth. 
So it's a non-structural fabric to absorb to absorb excess amount of resin or reactants from the laminate. So as we know that we are using a resin that is matrix. So if excess amount of matrix is available in the component, then the volume ratio, volume fraction will be reduced. It means fiber content will be less and matrix contents will be increased. So to achieve a desired property, we require a perfect amount of fibers as well as matrix. If there is any excess matrix, those can be extracted by means of this braider cloth. So if the matrix, if the matrix availability is high, then automatically the property will be reduced. Why? Because the main mechanical properties are depends upon the fiber content. So if the fiber content is reducing and matrix is increasing, ultimately the mechanical properties will be reduced. To get the desired mechanical properties, the fiber content should be high and the matrix purpose is to keep our reinforcements in its, in its original position as well as to protect from the environment. So here we are absorbing the excess matrix material from the laminate. The next one is breather cloth. So it's a porous material to provide a gas flow, gas flow path over the laminate. So we need to accept the matrix material or excess resin from the laminate. So here it creates a gas flow in order to avoid excess amount of extraction. So if it is gas flow in very minute amount of material will be moved out. Whereas if it is having high porous nature, so then excess amount will be, uh, will be extracted. So to avoid that, here we are using only a gas flow path. So the purpose of this is to ensure uniform vacuum under pressure. So it means to ensure uniform vacuum pressure as well as permit the escape of air. So as we know that, so here we are manually layering the layers. So one on the above. On the top of the layer, one layer we are placing one more layer so that it air entrapment, air entrapment by means of hand layer process we are keeping a laminate, it means lamina. On the top of that by means of matrix we are placing one more, one more, one more. Similarly we are increasing the layers. So here while adding some amount of air may entrap between the layers. So to extract the air from the layers, here we are using a blader cloth. So similarly, some amount of resins will liberate reactive materials. It means here we are using a catalyst for initiating the polymerization. So during the reaction, it may liberate some amount of reactant gases. So if the reactant gases are also present in the component, it will lead up to, a, to voids so that the strength will be reduced. So here we are extracting those reactants also in order to avoid air gaps or voids. So the escape of air or reactants, so some amount of reactants may be liberated depends upon the resin and moisture, if, they, if any moisture is available, that moisture can also be extracted and volatiles, some amount of volatile materials can also be present, those volatile materials can also be evaporated. So next one is bagging film, so bagging film is none other than a polythene film, similar to that, there is a member which permits a vacuum to be drawn within the bag. This is bag film. Next, tacky tape. Tacky tape is none other than a double sided tape. So, sealant tape is none other than the tacky tape. It is a double sided tape. So, one side it is sticking to the tool and one side to the our bag, to the polythene bag. So, tacky tape, adhesive strip used to bond the bag, used to bond the bag to the tool and provide a vacuum seal. So here, it's providing a vacuum seal. So it is connecting the tool as well as seal uh, as well as the bag, so that no air will be passed between these two components. So next one is, so these three are optional. So it doesn't require for all the methods. So only depends upon the shape of the component. These two can be present. May or may not be available in all the methods. All the Processes. So this is a tall plate. Tall plate. Tool placed on the laminate inside the bag to define the second surface. Tool placed on the laminate. On the laminate. So generally it's an open mode process. So only on the one side we are using the tool. On the other side it's a little atmosphere. 
So if we want the protection on the second surface also, it means the second surface is also having some surface, some uh, shape. It means it should be a flat or it should be a smooth. If we require a second surface also, then we will use this culprit. So that's the one. Culprit tool placed on the laminate on the top. Initially, it's having on the bottom. We are having a tool. So if we require the secondary surface also, then we will place this tool on the laminate inside the back to define the second surface. So second surface is none other than a top surface to define the top surface. So the next one is edge dams profile to define component edge. So if there is a pure edge. So the, our laminate should not be moved from this portion. Then we will go for this edge dams. Why? Right? Because here we are applying a pressure. It means we are sucking. It means by means of vacuum pumps, we are extracting the air from the chamber. So during that composition, the fibers or the matrix may move so that the edges, cause the edges may be disturbed. So some amount of fibers may move. So to avoid that, here we are using edge dams. That is profile to define component edges. So if we require any edges, then we will go for this edge jam, edge dams. The next one is intensifiers. Those are hard rubber profiles incorporated in the bag to consolidate the laminate at sharp radii. So if there is any sharp radius, there is any sharp radius here, the radius, then we will go for this intensifiers. Those are made up of rubbers. Those are hard rubbers to define those profiles. These three, one, two, three. These three are optional. So it depends upon the profile of the component, we can use those all. Those are optional first. Next one is breach unit. So next one is breach unit. Connected to prevent, sorry, connected to permit a vacuum to be drawn through the bagging film. So generally vacuum wall. So bridge unit connected to permit a vacuum to be drawn through the vacuum film. Next, vacuum pipes. So these vacuum pipes are connected to this vacuum wall. So here from this, if there is a vacuum pump, if this is vacuum pump, it's a pipes from vacuum pipe to this vacuum wall. That is vacuum pipes. Link between the bridge unit and the vacuum pump. Next one is resin trap. So as we know that we are extracting the resin, we are extracting the excess resin so that the excess resin can be trapped into a container that is this resin trap container in the vacuum line to collect any excess rain resin before it can be damaged to vacuum pump. So it doesn't go directly to the vacuum pump. So in between the vacuum pump and the vacuum wall, we are placing a resin trap. So that the character resin will be trapped by means of this resin trap into a container. Next one is vacuum pump. Generally a high volume vacuum pump. So for continuous running, for slow curing epoxy resin is 24 hours operation. So in the earlier video you have seen that it was, it, um, the process is less left over for a overnight. So it means around 12 hours. So whereas some process, the low curing epoxy means slow curing epoxy is required 24 hours of operation for consolidation. So during that time, the vacuum chamber, vacuum pump should be continuously on so that a good sortable vacuum pump should be selected. The next one is pressure gauges. So these pressure gauges are placed on the top of our chamber to initiate or to record to observe the pressure created inside the chamber. That is pressure gauges. Generally clock type or digital type. It means a needle type one or a digital one. Attached by a breech unit connector. So these are the various consumables of vacuum bagging process. So this is one more process of vacuum bagging process. So here this is our mold or this is our tool. On the top of the tool, this white color, this white color one is our laminates. So after filling, after placing our required laminates, those complete setup is placed into a bag. Into a bag. And those bag is connected to a vacuum pump by means of vacuum. 
So by means of vacuum pipes as well as this one is vacuum by means of vacuum gauges. By means of vacuum gauges, we can identify the pressure created inside the chamber. So if there is a high, then we will regulate the pump so that extraction will be less or can be controlled. This is our vacuum bagging process. So material options, so resins. So what type of resins we can use? That is primarily epoxy and phenolic. Epoxy and phenolic. Those two resins are generally used in this process. Polyester and vinyl esters. So polyesters or vinyl esters. Here in the spray hand layer process, we can use any type of resins. But here we are having some limitations on that is polyesters and vinyl esters may have problems due to excessive extraction extraction of styrene. So here by means of vacuum pump, we are extracting the resin, excess resin. So along with the resin, more amount of styrene can be extracted due to that the properties will be reduced. So excessive extraction of styrene, styrene from the resin by the vacuum pump. So while, I, excess, uh, while extracting the excess resin, some amount of styrene can also be extracted due to that the property will be reduced. So to avoid that, we are not using these polyesters and vinyl esters in this vacuum bagging process. Next one, fibers. Any type of fibers, it means glass fibers, carbon fibers, Kevlar fibers, any type of resins can be used in this process. So fibers, any in the sense, glass fibers, Kevlar, Kevlar is another, those are as aramid. Next, Kevlar, carbon, boron, like that. So different fibers along, it might be a woven one or a braided one or woven with different orientations. Anything can be used in this process. The next one is cores. So any type of sandwich cores can be used. It might be hexagonal or honeycomb structures, anything. Any type of cores can be used in this process. Next, advantages. So can I do high, can I do higher fiber content laminates? So can I choose higher fiber content? So the, if there is any excess matrix material, then the fiber content, the ratio of fiber content will be less. So here we are extracting the excess resin so that the fiber content will be more. So if as we discussed that the main mechanical property depends upon the amount of fiber. So if the fibers are high, then the mechanical properties are also high. So high can I choose higher fiber content laminates so that high mechanical properties can be achieved. Next one, heavier fabrics can be wet out. So whereas in a hand layer process there is a limitation that the sorry in spray layer process. So wetting is difficult for some fibers. Here whereas any type of fiber can be wetted easily. Why? Because by means of vacuum pump the matrix the distribution of metal will be uniform. So due to that heavier fibers can be wet out. So it means can also be wet out. Lower void contents. So lower void contents. So the voids are created by means of adding those layers, layer one on the layer. So here by means of vacuum pump, we are extracting those voids. It means the air are reactive agents, react uh, reactants, so that the air entrapment in the component is less. So that is lower void contents are achieved than the wet layer process. So wet layer and hand layer process are having some amount of voids itself. So here by means of vacuum pump, we are extracting voids. So it means, sorry, we are extracting air. So that the voids will not be created on the surface. Less amount of voids will be possible. Next, better fiber wet out. So this, this one, if we are fiber is wet out, that is the purpose. So better fiber wet out due to preserve and the resin flow throughout the structural fibers with excess into bagging materials. So, the same thing, the better fiber wet out can be possible by means of this pressure and resins. Next, health and safety issues. So, health and safety. Compared to spray layer process, this is having a good health and safety process. So, in spray layer process, those are converted into flumes and those can be entered. Inhaled art can be entered due to less volatile nature 
I have already discussed that the viscosity is very less due to its less viscosity. Those can be entered into clotting as well as that can be inhaled. So here the complete process is kept under a bag, under a bag or inside a bag. So it depends upon the component size. So the component can be kept inside a bag or that can be uh, covered with a bag by means of a sealant tape. So by means of that, no resins are coming out. So that the health and safety. The vacuum bag reduces the amount of wall files. So it is not releasing to the atmosphere. It is extracting by means of vacuum pump. So that the water metals will not be surrounded. Empty during curing. So health and safety. The vacuum bag reduces the amount of water emitted during curing. Next, this is the extra process. So here the, uh, we discussed that this is the extension of hand layer process. So the extra process adds cost. So here we are using an extra equipment that means the vacuum pump as well as pressure banks and so that the labor, the extra process adds cost both in labor and in disposal banking materials. So these materials cannot be used for a number of times. It should be disposable for each and every process, every step, for every component. So that the cost of this disp uh, dip, uh, disposable materials are high as well as those lab cost is also high. Along with that, the equipment is also high. Why? Right? Because here we are using a vacuum pump, vacuum pipes, pressure gauges. Those all are extra compared to hand lab process. So due to that, the cost of the product is high. Next, a higher level of skill is required by the operators. A higher level of skill. So here on the top of the component, after layer, we are using a wide variety of materials. It means bagging film, after that breather, blader, peel ply, so that various components, various layers are placing on the top of the component. So that a skill level is required. Next, low production rates due to bag stage. So all the components should be placed. All it means the processing time is high. Why? Right? Because in hand layer process, simply we place the one layer of fabric on the top of that one more, one more, one more. Simply we add it like this. But here the component should be filmed and it should be bagged. So that the time consuming is high. So that the time consuming is high, so that production rate is low. Next, mixing and control of resin can contain skill largely determined by operator skill. So it depends on it's a hand layer process. So on the top of each layer, we are adding one more layer. So that the viscosity of the com resin should be a well-defined one. So to maintain that viscosity, we need to mix our matrix material with a catalyst. Those mixture, those mixing depends upon the operator skill. Next, consolidation process limited to one atmosphere. So here in the this vacuum process, we are keeping the pressure at only one atmospheric pressure. So that is also a limited one. It is also a disadvantage to the process. These are the various applications of vacuum vacuum bagging process. So applications generally large, one of cruising boats, race car components, race car components, core bonding in production boats. So generally these are the applications of vacuum bagging process. The next one is pressure packing process. So pressure packing process is invert to vacuum packing process. So in vacuum packing process, we created pressure by extracting the air from the component. So here in vacuum uh, in this pressure packing process, so here we are creating the pressure. So it means here we are pushing the air or passing the air to get a desired thickness or desired profile of the component. So we are creating the pressure on the air component so that the uniformity will be achieved. So it's an inverse of our vacuum bagging process. In vacuum bagging process, we extracted the air and created the pressure. Here we are passing the air and we are creating the pressure. So pressure bagging molding. Pressure bag process is virtually a mirror image. So it means opposite to vacuum bagging molding. So in vacuum bagging molding, we extracted the air. Here in pressure bagging, we are pushing or we are pumping the air 
So it will publish the gas. So that we are creating the pressure. Next, relatively inexpensive technology. Next one is applications are sonar domes. So big one, sonar domes, antenna housings, aircraft fairings, etc. So general pressure packing is used for concave sections. As we observe that the dome antennas, the antennas, doors, air fairings, all are having concave sections. So those type of concave sections. So, so antenna, antenna will be like this. The concave. So here, so all the waves. So in antenna. All are divert, are diverted to a single point. All the signals are diverted. So here the section, the cross section of the surface should be smooth. So to obtain this type of smooth surface in concave sections, we will go for this pressure bagging. Whereas for convex or regular shaping, we will go for vacuum bagging process. The next one is auto flame molding. So auto flame molding is Advanced then this hand lamp process and spray lamp process, sorry, hand lamp process, spray lamp process, and vacuum bagging process. So, this is the extension of vacuum bagging process. So, there in vacuum bagging process, we created only pressure. So, here in the autoclave process, so here along with the pressure, we are adding the heat also for proper consolidation of our component. So, here in autoclave molding, combination of vacuum bag process and pressure bag molding. So it's a combination of both vacuum and pressure. So fabrics and fibers are pre-impregnated by the materials. So pre-impregnated, the fibers are pre-impregnated by the materials. So here the materials in the sense the matrix materials or the resins. So those are pre-impregnated by resins under heat and pressure or with solvent with pre-catalyzed resin with pre-catalyzed resin so it means only few amount of polymerization takes place due to this catalyst only pre-catalyzed resin so the next complete consolidation will be takes place inside this autoclave process so this autoclave is longer than similar to a woven process woven so as we know that in the woven vector woven it means Woven is used for heating. So here this is a indirectly it's a big woven. So this auto give auto clave. So here both pressure and heat can be regulated. Whereas in general in general woven it's only heat can be regulated. So in this auto clave machine we can regulate both pressure as well as heat. Both can be regulated in this process. It's a big size one. So the prepex, so the prepex are none of them. Uh, we already discussed that the prepex are similar to stickers. It means the fibers, this one, ultimately we are getting prepex by means of this process. The fibers are impregnated by matrix. It means the matrix and fibers are together and those are only pre consolidation. Only uh, some amount of consolidation takes place. So the remaining will be takes place by means of this heat and pressure. So simply we are sticking those tapes, prepex onto the surface of our mold and we are heating the component. So the prepex are laid up by hand or machine. So the prepex are also similar to fibers, but this so the first one is fibers. Next prepex equal to fiber plus matrix. So just prepex means we are adding some, some we are adding matrix materials to the fibers and that is pre-consolidated. Only few consolidation takes place. So that is prepex. So prepex is number than the fabrics having the matrix itself. That is the prepex are laid by hand. So it means stickers similar to stickers that can be laid by means of hand or by means of machine onto a mold surface. Next vacuum bag. So it's the complete layup is placed into a vacuum bag and then heated to typically 120 to 180 degrees centigrade to 
typically heated to 140 to 180 degrees centigrade so that the heat allows the resin so here heat allows the resin to initially reflow so it means due to this temperature the solidification will be it means the melting takes place and reflow it means it stick to the other surface also reflow and eventually to cure so up to 5 atmosphere of pressure can be applied to this laminate so whereas the vacuum lining process we use only one atmospheric pressure here in this autoclave molding we are using a 5 atmospheric of pressure Greater levels of consolidation. So here we are extracting all the voids and along with that we are supplying heat also. So that the consolidation, it means the polymerization will be higher by means of autoclave and advanced pressure cooker. So that is none other than autoclave by means of autoclave. Temperature control. So as we discussed that this autoclave consists of pressure regulation as well as heat regulations. So this heat regulation in this temperature control is normally done by means of gas or perfect heaters. The heat is supplied to bowel, it means sorry, the heat is supplied to autoclave by means of gas furnace or by means of electric heaters. So the next proportional integrated airway to controls, PID controls, that is for controlling our temperature. Next. Composite manufacturing in autoclave involves pressure temperature cycle. So, similar to heat treatment process, here also it required a cycle. So, only few, some amount of time can be heated, after that it should be well, after that it should be reduced. Similarly, the pressure can also be applied. We are having a cycle. So, it depends upon the component profile and the type of resin and fibers, we are having different cycles. That is, pressure temperature cycle. Composite manufacturing in autoclave was present temperature cycle. So, well cycle, so it comes up well cycle to get correct pressing viscosity. So, if we are keeping the temperature constantly, then that is called as well. The constant, we are not increasing or decreasing that portion, that condition is called well cycle. So, well cycle to get correct resin viscosity. Next, Q cycle to achieve optimum properties. Pure cycle to achieve optimum properties. So, as we discussed, that by means of this autoclave process, the consolidation is also very high. So, by curing, by means of this pure cycle, we are getting a good properties. So, this is the cycle of our this is a temperature and pressure cycle of autoclave process. So, the red line is indicated the temperature, whereas the blue line is indicating the pressure. So initially the temperature is around at room temperature, it means around 30 degrees centigrade. So after that, over a period of time, it means around one hour. It means up to one hour, we constantly increasing the temperature to 120 degrees centigrade. After that, the temperature is retained for one more hour. So this is called well cycle. So we are keeping the temperature constantly. Here yeah, we are not increasing or decreasing. We are maintaining the same temperature for over a period of time. That is one hour. The duration between these two, two hour and one hour, that is one hour. So for one hour, we are keeping the temperature constant. Again after that, we are increasing the temperature to 180 degrees centigrade. So here it is 160, 180, 200. So here we are increasing the temperature to 180 degrees centigrade. After that, that is, then the Q cycle starts. At this temperature, the consolidation takes place. So here the temperature is restored on the like this for two hours. So that the consolidation, the polymerization takes place between the map, the polymerization takes place in the resin. So that the bonding creates between the fibers and reinforcements. So it depends upon the matrix, depends upon the resin or matrix material, different types of bonds can be obtained. 
So next, after that, we are decreasing the temperature. So primarily, we are keeping the pressure also. We are having a pressure cycle also. So the pressure cycle. Also. So here after two hours, we increase the pressure and remain the pressure for the 10 time after that we release the pressure so this is the pressure cycle a temperature and pressure cycle for autoclave process next material options so material options for autoclave so general resins generally epoxy so many type of resins can be used in this process epoxy polyester phenolic and high temperature resins such as polymides, cyanide esters, and bismolites. So, various resins can be used in this process. Like similarly, fibers, any type of resins can be used in this process. So, used either directly from the grill or any type of fabric. It's a bourbon fabric or directly extracted from the grill. It means from the bobbin itself. Any type of fibers can be used in this process. Coats. So, any type of coats can also be used in this process. Although special type of foams need to be used. So special type of foam need to be used due to elevated temperatures and pressure involved in the process. So here we are using special type of foams. So in order to avoid, so here the temperature, we are giving some amount of heat means at elevated temperatures our components may damage. So to avoid the damage, so we are using separate special type of foams. Next, advantages. So, the major advantage is high fiber content. High fiber contents can be safely achieved with low lines, with low voids. So, high fiber content. So, high fiber content can be easily achieved by means of low voids. Next, fiber cost is minimized in unidirectional tapes. Since there is no secondary process to convert fiber into fabric prior to use. So instead of fibers, so we can use directly the prefix so that the cost will be reduced and the fiber content is also very high. Next, the extended working times. The extended working times means that structurally optimized complex layers can be readily achieved. So, some resins require high curing times, so some might take several months. So several months can also be cured. So up to several months at room temperature layers. So some materials for some uh, some resins it requires six months for curing. So such type of materials can also be cured in this process by maintaining the same temperature or throughout the time. For six months we can maintain the same temperature in our atmosphere. Whereas in autoclave, we can maintain the same temperature for over a period of time. For a six months also, we can keep the same temperature. Next, this potential for automation. So manual, so manual interruption can be avoided by means of upgrading to automation. Next, do not demand skill in labor, unlike in other process. Whereas in hand labor process, it requires a good skill in labor. Whereas in, so this can also be automated. So similarly, less amount of labor, unskilled labor can also be used in this process. Next, excellent health and safety issues. So the complete process is undergoing in a controlled chamber that is autoclave so that health issues are very less. So it's a good safety equipment. Next, disadvantages. The main disadvantage of this is the high cost. High capital cost, it means those are expensive. Next, slow to operate. As we discussed, about, so some resins can be cooled for over a bit of time. So here, more many type of resins are using in this process, so that the operation time is also less. The average operation time means slow to operate and limited in size. So as we know that, so the first step, high capital cost expense depends upon the size of these autoclave. The cost also will be high. So if we if we require to manufacture larger components then the size of the autoclave should also be more so that the cost of the equipment will be high so that it is limited to 
only few sizes up to a range only we are preparing them so we are having some art of use so generally those are using a HAM as well as aerospace industries it means there they are having around 50 feet of art of use so the cost of the art of use is very high if we require to manufacture larger components so next more suitable for so these are more suitable for expensive advanced applications so normal regular applications regular components cannot be manufactured by means of this RWA process only advanced expensive advanced applications like because the use of expensive pre-impregnated fabrics so prefects are none of them pre-impregnated fabrics so the cost of the prefects are high so that this can be this process can be used only for high end applications that is advanced applications next long cycle times so as we discussed that it's a, the operating conditions are low slow to operate so that due to that the cycle the cumulative time takes place that is long cycle times so why because here we are having a cycle that is uh, the temperature cycle as well as the pressure cycle for certain time we are rising the temperature keeping the temperature constantly again rising again we are keeping the constant it means today having 12 cycles and 2 cycles the time the cycle time is high for this process so that is long cycle times so this are the equipment so this is laboratory size art of view. it means very small whereas that is for aircrafts so it's around 20 feet of diameter 20 feet diameter art of use so aircraft Parts stacked in an auto plane. So these are the various various components of aircrafts. So that is auto flow process. So as we as we observed that, so it might be around three feet diameter. It might be a six feet. So it's around 10 to 15. Uh, if it has 15, 15 feet autoclave. So similarly, so it depends upon the size of the autoclave. The equipment cost is also varying. So if the size is varying, the cost of the equipment is also increasing. So due to the process, only expensive applications, means advanced applications are using by means of this autoclave process. Next one is applications. So generally, as we discussed that these are using for high-end applications, that is aircraft structural components, examples wings and tail sections, F1 racing cars. So only advanced, so you can complete the wing on the top of the complete surface can be manufactured by means of this autoclave process. So only high-end applications are using this autoclave process. Process. So, autoclave process is extension of vacuum bagging and pressure bagging process. So, these are compared to auto, uh, sorry, compared to vacuum bagging process. These are advantages. Why? Because by means of along with pressure, we are applying heat also. So that the consolidation is very high. So it means so many most of the voids can be avoided and avoided with good consolidation. So that the properties of the components will be high. But the main disadvantage is the cost of the components, it means the equipment is high, so that these are using only for high-end applications. Thank you.